welcome welcome to another class with Paige that's me uh, your chief pixel pusher and paint brusher over at gumption I think we're gonna have some fun tonight we're kind of doing something a little bit different we're going to be doing a landscape so if you're into landscapes let's get this party started first and foremost welcome to this class I think it's gonna be some fun for you um, and I and if you want to be able to download a sheet that you can trace, uh, you can do that two ways. You can go down below and look in the description. If you're in YouTube, you can find those links down below. If you're tuning in from the Pocatello Art Center, you can find those links in this week's post for this video. And if all else fails, you can use the chat and you can log into chat and I have left those links uh, in chat which should be either next to your youtube window or below it so click those links if you want to use them i have a reference uh, image and i also have a trace sheet so this is what let's see this is what we're painting this week we're doing a little scene from mackie idaho and so we're just going to paint this uh, lovely little field and you will be needing to download Come on, computer. Work with me here. That's not the right one. Um, you're going to need to download something that looks like this. Uh, you can sketch. You can trace it. You can transfer it. When I did my first painting, I transferred it just by putting pencil lead on the back of my paper. Um, and, or you can just sketch it, which is what I'm going to do with you tonight. Uh, let's see. And you should also have a reference image. And that image is going to look like that. So snag those. You can leave the reference image on your phone uh, and use your phone as we paint tonight. Or um, you can print it out if you have a color printer. Next, we're going to need to talk about supplies. Hey, Virginia, it's good to see you here. Welcome to class. So let's see, we're gonna, I'm gonna switch over to my supplies mode so you can know what colors that I used. Uh, and there you go. So you don't have to have these exact colors. Um, you can use whatever colors that you want. I'm using this as a guideline for you. I realize that we don't all have the same colors and that is okay. So tonight I'm going to be using sap green and a green gold, which is kind of a yellowy green, and moon gold, which is a purple color, which you can achieve by mixing blue and red paint, uh, and sodalite, which is like a Payne's gray color. Quinacridone burnt orange is a color that I'm gonna be using, and when we get to that point, we'll discuss some options there. If you have some rose colors or brownie colors, you could use those as well. Uh, burnt sienna would be a great color to use as an alternative too. We're also going to be using cobalt teal and uh, other supplies that we'll be using possibly tonight are a hair dryer to dry your painting if you need to speed up that time a little bit more and a pencil and an eraser because we'll be sketching or I'll be sketching along with you. So we can kind of stay in sync here and paint. You can paint along with me. Uh, so I'm not, hopefully not going too fast for you. If you have any questions right now or anything that you'd like to pop into chat before we start, go ahead and do that now. Uh, and I think that we'll start with an over overhead shot and I'll just kind of get started working here with my paper. Now, let's see if we can focus in a little bit here. There we go. Let me see. So I'm going to be using washi tape and I cheated a little bit because I know the dimensions that I need here. So I just kind of marked that quickly. But we're going to go through the whole process from start to finish. So we know, um, so you can kind of know and see how I approach watercolor. Of course, my technique is not the only technique there is. And I'm just one of probably hundreds of thousands of watercolor artists here on YouTube. 
but the goal is to make it approachable for you. So you will get out there and get to painting and not be intimidated by the process because watercolor is a little intimidating. I do know that. So what I'm doing is I'm just uh, giving myself a border here because we're going to have a little narrow wash. I'm going over that tape to make sure that we don't have any leaks. I've had pretty good luck with washi tape, surprisingly, and so I'm really glad about that. Okay. Well, I hope your week has been going well. We got to go on vacation for a couple days last week to the Mackey area and I was very excited to actually get some imagery of mountains and practice mountains a little bit more. So I hope that you enjoy this. It is a beautiful area. So if you ever have the opportunity to be in that area, definitely go check it out. It is gorgeous and there are mountains for days. So I'm gonna give you a little closer shot of this painting that I did earlier in the week. We're gonna do something pretty close to this. So uh, you can see that we have a lot of green and a lot of vibrant color here. And it, then we go a little bit cooler as we go into the background. Uh, and so we'll get started on that. But first I gotta draw. So I'm using a 2B pencil and a kneaded eraser. These are fantastic erasers to use with watercolor paper because they don't remove the paper. And that can create a lot of problems when you are uh, doing watercolor painting. So feel free to go ahead and use the trace, oops, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead and use the tracing link over in the chat if you do not wanna have to sketch this out yourself. Um, there's no shame in that. I am gonna go ahead and attempt to get a straight horizon line here with my ruler. And I'm just lightly going over that. And then I'm going to, I'm really gonna be drawing in the negative space here. So this area here, that's the sky, and then I'll kind of go in and do the mountains. These don't have to be perfect. I have a lot of folks that tune in who were in my drawing classes and my in-person watercolor classes. And uh, this is how we're able to to do it these days. If you're here with me and you're a regular, go ahead and say hello in the chat. Uh, if you're not, if you're new, go ahead and say hello in the chat. We welcome newbies or new to us. I'm really excited to see Virginia is here. And you can see I'm just kind of using my, uh, this as my guide uh, for what's happening here. So if you're feeling a little bit lost, um, don't worry. I'm going to put my little silo in here. I think I, I'm going to make him a little bit bigger than my original painting because he was so tiny. And he kind of is in the, the grass here, so it's kind of a straight shot because he's so close to the horizon there. And I kind of just made a mark here where we have the top of, I don't know what this is, if it's, we'll call it grass, but it, if it's wheat or what it is, but um, just 
just so we kind of know where that's at because there's a transition in color. And this one is a pretty easy one, I think, to sketch out. Hey, Laurel, thanks for tuning in. I'm so happy that you guys are here tonight. Uh, we were really excited to get away, too. We really, truly have not uh, done that, I guess, since we made a trip to the Tetons to come see you. And so uh, we really needed to get away. And glamping is fabulous, right? <laughs> It's definitely, I, I have a definition for glamping now. So if you have access to a commode and a shower, potentially, whether it's in your trailer or uh, at your campground, I think that's sort of glamping. That's, that's pretty nice, don't you think? <laughs> so hopefully you guys are doing well and uh, ready to do a little painting. So if you are late tuning in, go ahead and check the comments or the chats there. There are your resources to download uh, for what we're doing tonight. I have mine sketched out, so we'll kind of, um, we will go over the colors that I'm gonna start with, and I'm probably gonna start with the sky. So we'll do that, and as you can see between my original painting and the one I just did, I have less, even less sky now to paint but I didn't do it dark enough, so I really was trying to see how dark it would get, and I thought it was dark at the time. It wasn't dark enough, so I'm going to mix a little extra paint tonight for that. So we're going to go to our palette cam and start mixing some paint. So... Move my brushes over. So I'm going to just put a little water in here. Uh, I'm going to wet my cobalt teal. I'm actually going to bring up my palette cam here so you can see kind of what colors I'm using. So I'm going to use cobalt teal for the sky. I don't normally use this color for the sky, but you know, you got to experiment and try colors um certain people gravitate to certain colors and teachers will only teach with those colors and it's nice to kind of explore new colors and new horizons so to speak so what i'm going to do is i have wet my brush in clean water and i'm just going to um well actually i'm not going to do wet and wet I think we're just going to do wet on dry. So I'm going to take my paint and I'm just going to methodically move this bead of paint across the sky. And when I say move the bead, you know you have this little droplet of water. And the reason that we move the bead in that way is because it can give you a smooth transition. So you don't leave marks in your paper. It just looks, it looks better and it winds up having a nice gradation. Now notice when I dip my brush, I'm dipping it in the paint that I've mixed up. I'm not dipping it in water. So if your bead runs low, dip it in your mixed paint water. All right. So that looks pretty good. I'm gonna leave that to dry and I think that we can work in the grass area um, next while the top sky is drying. But I'm gonna mix up a couple colors, um, maybe three colors, and we're gonna go back to the palette cam here so we can mix these up. We're gonna do a little wet and wet technique and see what it will do for us. We're gonna do a little bit of layering paint as well, but I really wanted to try to see what we can make happen with this uh, mixing technique. So if you're mixing your paint uh, on your own and you're not using a convenience color, which is a color that comes out of the tube looking like this, 
you're going to want to mix a yellow and probably a cool yellow if you have a lemon yellow. Um, that is going to be great with a blue probably ultramarine would be a good blue to to use to mix a green uh, and you're just going to use more yellow than you use um, blue so it's lighter i'm going to also use a sap green here if you don't have sap green use your blue yellow combo and you're just going to use a little bit more of the blue you want you can kind of see here in the palette cam that i have this grassy green color this is called sap green but if you have a green on your palette you know whatever will do so next i'm going to i'm going to put down a little sap green in another area and i'm going to mix a little bit of sodalite or what you could use is a Payne's gray any kind of darker color and I'm just gonna put it in there so it's just a little bit darker of a green so that looks pretty looks pretty dark might give it a little bit more in there all right so I'm getting my picture out here so I can kind of see um, what the original reference photo look, looked like. And uh, again, if you are tuning in late, go ahead and check out the chat for those reference uh, imagery. And also you can look in the description below your YouTube window and that will also have a link for you. Okay. So first, I'm going to use, I think, let's see, this is an 8 brush. I'm going to, I'm using this 8 brush. Oh, let me switch it over here. This guy. So he's a pretty good size for this little paper that I'm using uh, to move paint. And I'm going to start with my green gold. And I'm really going to try to work fast. Um, and I'm just going to show you, just so you, if you're new and you're checking in, this is kind of what the consistent, well, this is the consistency of what I have mixed for my paint here, if that helps you at all. I see students oftentimes kind of have issues with water versus paint ratios, and this is um, a pretty good consistency here. The truth will come out when I put it on the page, but... So I'm going to start up at the horizon line here with this green gold. I'm going to try to work really pretty quickly. And I'm going to not snag the silo here. I'm just moving that bead across. And we can actually really move this whole thing across here. So we'll move the bead across and we'll cover this whole bottom section with this green gold. So you can see where I've drawn, I've drawn a line here because that's where the grass kind of, it goes into that golden state. So I'm going to take my sap green and I'm going to work wet and wet along the bottom here in hopes that it will kind of create you see how it's um, bleeding out so to speak it's creating this texture that might be kind of that grass color and then I'm gonna dip into my dark darker paint and there's a, a line at the bottom and I am going to draw along that line with this darker paint. And I may even dip into my um, soda light to just get it a little bit darker. You can even uh, wing up your paint if you want to.
I'm going to go under this little bush here because it's got a shadow there. Maybe go along the bottom here. I don't do this enough, but honestly, watercolor is just great in that it will create a lot of texture on its own. I often am layering uh, work to get exactly what I want. And this is a great opportunity to use the paint to do the work, blending and stuff while it's wet. So I felt like this was too light here. So I'm going back in with my sap green and just seeing how that does. Might kind of go along the bottom here too. You can also, looks like my paint has dry is drying pretty quick. You can also go along the fields up here with your sap green or a darker green. Because you have these areas in the fields. And for fun, I might even dip into my teal a little bit and see what happens if I put it here. Things typically, when you're painting, things are brighter when they are closer to you. And as they recede, they, are, they have less uh, brightness and less contrast. and they become cooler, where some things closer to you are warmer. So that looks like a hot mess, and I'm going to get out my uh, hair dryer and dry this, so this gives you a little bit of time to, if you're behind me, you can kind of catch up there. So I'm gonna mute my microphone, hopefully that uh, does the trick, and I'll be back in a moment. Now, um, you might have a question about what settings you use on your hair dryer. And of course you see that I'm using a diffuser there and that does a great job of diffusing the air so it's not blowing uh, your pigment around. But I do it on the medium to high setting uh, and it seems to work pretty well and dries pretty quick. So if you had questions about that, there is your answer. So there are a couple of things that we can do in, in this area. We can lift some of that color if we want uh, to 
lift the pigment um, or we can add more pigment here. I think this is a good start because we have lots of texture that's going on with uh, these paints and hopefully yours did something similar. If not, don't worry. You can always continue to work on it. And you can see on my first painting, I uh, had to go in and create some of this, uh, these darker areas, but I really wanted to try to use at least something natural from the watercolor itself to start. Uh, if you guys have any questions right now at this point, let me know. I am going to, I think what I'm going to do is we're going to move to the mountains as well in the background and do some background painting. And so we'll have to mix a little bit of paint. Hopefully I'm, on, I'm not moving too fast for you. If I am, please let me know in chat and I will slow down. So we're going to go to our palette cam right now. So I used quinacridone uh, burnt orange and you can see, well, you can't see right there, but you can see it's sort of a corally color. It doesn't quite look as brown as you would think. And this isn't a color that I use too often, but I really do enjoy it. Uh, let's see if I can get back to my camera there. And, uh, you know, it'd be okay if you even put a little burnt sienna in there. I'm also going to mix up this moon glow color. And you can see it is really just a purple color. So if you wanted to use an ultramarine, let's see, I could mix burnt sienna and ultramarine. You get kind of, oh, let's see that, you get kind of a, a brownie color, but that would work as well. I like to use Moon Glow whenever I have a chance because it's just a fun purpley color. And oftentimes when we're looking at mountains, we're kind of dealing with this environmental haze sort of, and also you're dealing with, um, the mountains as they recede they become cooler and fainter and i think we're going to try a similar we've tried this technique before this isn't exactly how i did it when i did my example but i think this will be really fun for you guys so we're going to lay down some water just in the mountains we have i think we have a good amount of paint mixed we'll see we're going to lay down just water in the mountains area here. And I'm going to leave out my little silo. And hopefully this will stay good and wet so I can get this accomplished. So you gotta move fast. And keep in mind, wherever there's water, watercolor will travel. So if you paint outside the lines, you can just dab it with a paper towel and you'll be fine. Okay, so I have quite a bit of water down there. So I'm going to go in with my uh, burnt orange color. And you can kind of see, you know, core really uh, spreads really nicely and not all pigments do this natural pigments may not move this nicely but if you look at your reference here we've got this kind of warm color coming through and so I'm just laying down some of that color and I'm gonna move to different areas. If it's too dark, it may have dried there. Don't worry, you can just add a little water. And 
And then I'm going to go in with my Moon Glow, kind of in these back areas. And you'll see if you drag that bead around, you can just drag that dispersion wherever you want to. So if you're having it wind up in spaces that you don't like, just move that bead along. And you can dab it in here and let it do a bunch of work in the background, or you can be exacting. We're here to have a good time and have some fun and learn a little bit about painting. And I think this really is going to be lovely for our mountains. So I've dipped in a little bit more of my pigment, straight pigment here. So that's how I'm able to get a little bit darker. And then I'm going to go over here. I'm drying a little bit over here. It's just kind of fun to let it do its thing. We even have a little bit of darkness here in spots. And you can go along the bottom. There is shrubbery down here. Now, uh, if you are like a paint junkie, like some of my students, <laughs> I am, Moon Glow is a Daniel Smith color. It's kind of a specialty color. You do not have to have Moon Glow to do cool stuff like this. You can mix your own colors. But for those people who are really fascinated with colors and really in the know, that is where it's at. So I'm lucky I have this camera. I can see what's going on on my page. So step back from your watercolor and see if you like it. You can even tilt your page if you want. You want to have stuff um, spread downward. You can do that too. I need to stop playing in there. But once you're kind of done, you should be done. And this is advice that I give myself. <laughs> you can work an area too much, too. But I do have this area back here that is a lighter kind of mountain. It's a mountain that's in the background. So I'm just lightly going to paint that guy in. So I really enjoy that effect more than I, uh, this one's good too, but I enjoy the difference between those two. I may go in and darken some stuff, but those mountains in our reference image are actually pretty muted and I got them a little too dark here. So just leave it. And so Along the horizon line, we have the trees and shrubs that are there. So I'm going to use this color over in my palette that I mixed that uh, was this um, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. It's kind of this brownie color. And so instead of letting it go to waste, I think I'm going to use it and maybe some of this dark green to paint in these little shrubs along the horizon line. So I'm going to get that extra hair out of there. So if you are traveling to Idaho, you live in Idaho, you have the ability to go to Mackey, the Mackey area. 
you have ATVs and that kind of a thing, or you like to fish, or just hang out at a reservoir, it is a lovely place to visit. So you see I'm just going, I have this really small brush here, and I'm just kind of dabbling along. The edge here to indicate shrubbery trees and I can really get in and kind of define the side of that silo a little bit too and you can even add a little bit of a green here and let the watercolor kind of do its thing. I find it's kind of fun to mix those colors and have a little bit of variation here. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear my cat Harlow, but she is waiting by the door meowing. Okay. So I'm going to let that little guy dry too. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and pop them into chat right now. I want to get after this silo. And I think I can, actually. So when we're looking at the silo in our picture here, you know, this is kind of a combination of you've got the warm sunset kind of vibe here. It's got a lot of this warm color that we've got in our uh, mountains background but we have a lot of gray or gray blue colors you could use a blue here for the silo but what really is going to make this look like a silo is where we have our dark kind of shadow here and we have our light hitting here and reflected light here uh, so that's kind of how i'm going to make the silo come to life that's my plan anyway. So I have some of this moon glow and this moon glow has, I'm just gonna show you how it separates. Cause I think I'm pretty sure it's got ultramarine blue in there. It separates into the colors that make it up. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of blue here and see what we get. That's a little a bluer gray kind of color. I'm going to put a little water in there. I'm not going to have it too dark at first uh, here. And I'm just going to kind of draw this roof line here for myself. And that looks pretty blue, pretty not as blue as I wanted, so I might go in with a little bit of cobalt here. I like that a little bit better. Sometimes you have to improvise and you can't be afraid to do that. I know painting can be intimidating for those of you who may not do it often. So I lost a little bit of my white area. I'm going to see if I can get it back. And I just dip my brush in clean water and I suck up that light area. And I'm going to do a little bit of it here on the back side. 
And then we can add more pigment here. to start giving it that shape. And I might need to let that dry a minute. I'm gonna grab a paper towel. So keep painting. Actually, I have these great rags that I got that I use when I paint murals and I got them a little later than I should have they would have been great really handy to have earlier but you can get them in the paint um, section and you can use them instead of paper towels if you're trying to be environmentally friendly they come in a big bag They work pretty good. So while my silo is drying, you can go back into your grass if you want to and give it more dimension or create some darkness if you need to. If you're um, if you didn't have good luck with your your wet and wet technique, you can always go back in and paint uh, in the darks, and that will help shape your lights as well. I'm going to I'm going to demonstrate a lift technique and we'll see if it works with this green gold. We'll see how staining that is. So I've got a size 6 brush here and I'm dipping it in clean water. And I'm going to lighten that might be a little too much water. I'm going to lighten this area here and I'm just going to scrub it with my brush. This is a technique I use all the time, and sometimes I, uh, you know, it's just so automatic that I do it while I'm teaching. So um, you could go in other spots that you see might need some lightening. And also this is a great technique for softening edges too, if you have some stubborn edges that you do not like. Now you don't have to do this to yours. I just wanted to really demonstrate what this looks like and how easy it is to do. I mean, you could even go in with some darker paint now if you wanted to. So I'm gonna lift this, but we'll do one where we put in some darker paint just to demonstrate. So I'm kind of scrubbing that and lifting it, but you could go back in with the green and go in wet and wet and drag a little color through there. The difference and why you might do this is uh, this leaves a really soft kind of line, soft color without really hard edges. Whereas over here you see harder edges because this was dry already. You'd think Harlow never got any attention but you never met more spoiled cats than ours. <laughs> no cat was harmed in the filming of this tutorial. So I'm just kind of, there's this line that kind of runs parallel in the field with the grass, um, in the wheat or grass, whatever it is. And that might be a little darker than I want, but And you can, I mean, you can be very subtle with this grass, how it is up here at the top. Or you can, you know, what I really like to do is to use a brush with just a little bit of pigment in it. That is very subtle. 
it may only be a little bit darker than what's laid down there. Sometimes it can be just another layer of the original color that's down. Okay. So I feel like I'm looking at my image here. I may want to darken some areas here and just demonstrate to you. Um, shaping this grass a little bit more because this area is pretty dark so I have a sap green here and I'm just lightly kind of filling it in here I really want to keep some of these edges that feel a lot like grass so I'm gonna just kind of tap this in here now you can use the tip of your brush and draw grass. I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully you can see that. We'll zoom in here. So you can do that as well. I'm just going to kind of, I'm tapping, using the side of my brush. And I want to be careful as I'm looking at this on camera because it's really dark down along the edge here uh, in our image. So I want to keep that bead down so it will create that edge here. And you can even go in with a darker um, color if you want. These brushes are great for being able to give you some grass uh, effects. And I'm just going to use it subtly here in some spots. I also am going to use it in my little bush that's here. It's got some dark darkness in it on this side where the sun is not hitting it. You can just kind of speckle it in there however you want. This bush also has a, a shadow underneath it, so when you're looking at imagery and or if you're out in nature and you're painting, you note where the shadows are and where the highlights are. Those are things that really bring your paintings to life. And I might just add some details here. You can even bring in a little bit of a darker color in this these areas too, real lightly. I'm kind of just playing with this, adding a little bit of texture. And I think in this little bush, now when I look at it, it's got some red in it. So I'm going to use that color I mixed for the mountains and just drop in a few berries here. It's 
kind of nice because it breaks up that green just a little. <laughs> My poor cat. Kyle is out there uh, painting himself and she hates closed doors, so she wants in. So I'm going to go attack my silo a little bit more because it's dry. I'm just going to add a little bit more definition here. And you see, I have this really skinny brush. You may not have a brush like this, but if you have a brush that has a nice tip on it, you can use it as well. I just am a big fan of these little teeny brushes and they kind of add the icing on the cake. So this roof is kind of a corrugated roof and you can, I'm adding these little lines in there. Can you guys hear her? She's gonna have a full blown fit. If you have cats, I'm sure you know what it's like. Now I just did those sides. I may not necessarily recommend that for anyone, but I felt like my, uh, my little silo needed a little bit of definition there. I'm just adding a little more dark down through the center there to really help give it the appearance. Now sometimes I really enjoy adding kind of an unexpected um, color to certain things. So here I have this cobalt teal that I was kind of mixing into this. Um, kind of gray blue just to differentiate it a little bit it's also kind of fun just to do have a little fun with it it's it would probably be our focal point in this painting and a focal point is where your eye is drawn to that area and I think I'm going to, I might go back into these, the mountains again. I'm, this is a gamble that I'm taking. <laughs> Just in some areas, because I really enjoy how they uh, have their own, they, how they've turned out. So I might, there's just some slightly darker areas that I can see that I might want to just give it a little more definition. And sometimes in watercolor, that's sort of how I feel about uh, watercolor. It's like, should I, shouldn't I? But everything is a learning lesson, especially in watercolor. So the more that you practice, the more that you experiment. Really, I think the better painter that you can become because you are familiar with your tool. You know how much water you might need. And it takes the guesswork out. And if you struggle and you're having trouble, don't beat yourself up. You know, it takes time to get there. And the fact that you're here and you're painting, that is half the battle of being fearless enough to just get started. It's kind of funny because Kyle, my husband, uh, a couple weeks ago, he forced me to take a day off work and to go outside and get some sunshine. And 
the rule was there was no art making unless I was art making outside. So as I showed you guys last week, I got that little travel uh, watercolor book. And I kind of like the idea of getting out and, and doing a little painting out of doors. Because truly no photograph is going to be able to capture the colors the way that you see them uh, in real life. And as artists, we can inject our own magic kind of in our work and just, you know, interpret things how we like that's called artistic license so my uh, nephew andy is a um, a king of artistic license and i think that's really great Feels like this class just zoomed by. How about you guys? Do you feel that way? I'm just adding a little bit of that burnt orange to those because I had a big white space there. Right. Well, my best, my favorite thing is pulling the tape. So uh, I'm going to pull the tape on this and you can see if I did a good job taping that or not. If you have uh, tape that's taken up your paper when you do these, um, you might need, it could be your paper if you're using cheap paper. Sometimes that'll happen, but it will happen with good quality paper too. Rule of thumb is to pull that tape back just like this and gently pull it. But there's nothing better than a nice clean edge. So how did you do tonight? How did you find this assignment? I think last week I assigned uh, uh, the task of telling me about your wins. Uh, that could be within your painting or just in your quarantine living this week, how your week went. Uh, I think anytime that you get to paint or to do something that's relaxing like this, it's a good thing for anyone because it allows you to kind of get out of your headspace and do something uh, enjoyable and not not something where you have to worry about anything. So if you have wins this week, pop them down in the comments and let me know your wins. If you have questions about colors that I might have used or a technique, or if you're having trouble somewhere in your painting process, uh, leave that down below too. Um, and I will answer those questions as we are 
wrapping up uh, tonight. One thing I want to make sure to do is thank my Patreon patrons. Uh, thank you for uh, to Laurel and Colin who support this channel and help enable me uh, to do this on a weekly basis. I owe you a couple videos, guys, so I've not forgotten about that. Uh, thanks, Colin. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this class. I know that you're really into the uh, landscapes, and maybe we'll do some more of those landscapes. Um, I've seen some of Colin's work here recently, and it looks great. You're doing a great job. So I don't know if you learned anything new this go around, but hopefully you did. So if you are new to this channel and you do not know me, I have, uh, you can find me on social media. You can also find more content over at IHaveGumption.com. Um, reach out and say, hey, I love it when my folks that are in this class come and say hello and talk about their process for these classes and how they're doing. Um, it kind of is a barometer for me to know how I'm doing. So hopefully you're enjoying these. Also, if you have uh, any ideas for some new classes or upcoming classes, I really like to get your input. I try to uh, incorporate that in these classes. And if you're in here live with me, you get to have some input. So uh, leave that down in the comments too. Uh, we have a bit of a delay here, so I'm just gonna hang out uh, a little bit and see if you have any questions for me um, tonight. I need to have some awesome music playing. I was thinking about doing that tonight and uh, didn't, didn't get it done, but we might wind up with music one of these nights. So uh, I guess my win for this week, I'll go because, you know, we're kind of waiting, is that I was able to go and uh, relax and enjoy the outdoors and I even did a little painting while I was on vacay uh, last weekend so that was kind of a win just to relax and then enjoy being in the great outdoors well it looks like you guys are kind of quiet tonight so uh, if you have any questions uh, moving forward go ahead and put them down in the comments below and I will respond uh, if you're watching this on the replay go ahead and do that um, and ah, Laurel, there you are. Oh, right. Laurel. So Laurel in the comments said that pulling off the tape, um, is her win because it is very, uh, satisfying to pull that tape once your, uh, painting is done. Uh, it just makes it feel like a whole new painting. I don't know. I don't know what it is about that, but it's satisfying to watch as well as do. Yeah, grass is a little bit tricky, and it's tricky for me too, Laurel. Um, that's why I kind of really want to do that uh, technique where we were kind of letting that paint blend. Your paint might not uh, have enough granulation or movement. Uh, it kind of depends on the paint itself. So um, that's something we can always practice is grass and those kinds of things. Uh, because unlike acrylic or something you could go over with a, a lighter color with a brush, um, you can't do that in watercolor. You can either pull that color out, use masking fluid, or just paint it in. So, uh, and I'm curious, uh, Laurel, and you might want to have you send this information to me personally if you are if you tuned out, uh, but. Um, I'd be curious to see what kind of brushes that you're using too. Um, when you come visit, I'm we'll have to look at some of these brushes that I have and maybe get you one. Um, these these guys aren't too uh, expensive, and they're really also very satisfying to use when you're painting grass and lines and kind of defining stuff. So if you aren't Laurel, you might also check that out too. These are Trakel brushes, uh, but you can find brushes like this with little teeny tiny ends just about anywhere in any art store. Mm. 
Well, guys, I think I'm going to wrap it up. We did really good this week. We managed to do this within an hour or so. And so uh, I would recommend definitely getting out there and practicing some landscapes. I know I definitely need to practice more landscapes. So uh, I'll probably be doing that too. But thanks for tuning in. Thank you for your support. And I hope you learned something new. And I will see you next week. I don't have a class yet. So, you know, if you do have suggestions for a class, go ahead and put it in the comments. Uh, and I'll read those later. Um, thank you, Laurel. I appreciate you being here. So I'll see you guys later and have an awesome weekend.